Yeah, no, absolutely. Thank you very much, Wolfgang. And um, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's the unfortunate position, really, because actually what I'm going to share with you now is kind of a summary, really, of what Zoe, Cathy and Al have been sharing, really, because it's about having, for me, um, sort of vision and values in, in what it is you're choosing to use and why you're choosing to use it and having a bit of a North Star around that. So a framework that I use, which all three of you will be well aware of, is, is that TPAC framework where we know that teachers have got great content knowledge, they've got great pedagogical knowledge. Um, but what's really helpful is then having that, that expert technological knowledge and having the confidence to know and this, again, is a great tenet of TPAC, which I think I might have shared on a previous episode as well. But it's not about using technology all, all the time. It's about knowing when it's right to or not to. And so if you're if you're exploring your practice, like Zoe was saying, and thinking, you know, how can we scaffold things that we're already expert in, things we're already really, really good at? What can we then actually then, you know, think about using technology wise that could actually, you know, really take things up a notch to a, to a higher level? Uh, and so having that that confidence in your use of technology is, is super important because just like you know you want to return on investment from from your your colleagues in school uh, you want to return on investment from any technology you might choose to bring in and so that again is is why if you've got the time uh, within your professional learning setup within your organization to take some of those action research approaches uh, um that, that, that zoe was mentioning and and i i have to be completely honest you know a lot of the work i do is underpinned by the practices that i took on board when i was working with zoe when, when she was a former colleague you know the things i try and share with schools now uh, are, are things that i've learned as part of my work with her because you know jumping in with both feet you know with, with technology you know it, it, technology's got the potential to be absolutely fantastic but it's also got the potential to do absolutely nothing as well and so if if, if you want to have that impact and, and you want to see things working uh, there was a dfe report that came out from a um a, a huge study um, more than a thousand schools um and more than a thousand head teachers more than a thousand teachers responded to this study uh, uh, is looking at, I forget who wrote it, Cathy, might, you, you might better refer to it and, and know what, what I'm talking about, uh, came out at the tail end of last year. But um, uh, with, with that research, they were trying to look really at, at what technology was being used. But as we'll all know, it's all very well and good having pockets of, of you know, good technology use and impact within your organisation. But where technology can really have an impact is where it's being used well and at scale. And so the, the unfortunate truth is, is that if you've got a few people within your organization who wear the I don't do technology hats, that's where you can start hitting some bumps in the road. And that's why the approaches we've heard so far where we can be thinking about, you know, what are those small little tweaks? And I'm sure Zoe will talk about marginal gains in a few minutes. But what are those little things we can add to our practice as a collective? Um, a regular one that I share is around use of keyboard shortcuts. Lots of the things that um, Kathy mentioned as part of particularly the second third and fourth points um, which I, I share an awful lot around on the using um, digital technology report she, she worked on you know, focusing on those things there and what the small wins are that you can gain as a collective body thinking about that collective teacher efficacy which if you read um, Hattie's work we'll, we'll know that it's not about everyone being efficable in a certain thing but having those conversations and, and working and and, and and learning together around all these things but if you can get those sort of things working at scale that's where uh, you can really start to see those sorts of impacts but I think as an organization articulating that vision sharing that vision having conversations around where you're trying to go on that learning journey and um, having those common approaches those easy simple wins those actionable things those takeaways all those sorts of things framing it around something which which is easy to grasp like tpac uh, um, can, can really help to sort of move things forward so if you're looking to try and get that return on your investments uh, and that's what i try and work on and share with the schools that i work with I, I don't think there's any sort of magic wand really just like there's no silver bullet or magic wand with technology the things we're exploring here are just those small measured tiny little movements forward it, it might feel like you know you're not on a day-by-day -day basis it might feel like you're going at a snail's pace but actually when you look at things over a three month six month nine month twelve month two year three year period over that sort of that, that, that macro rather than the, 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 rather than the micro scale you'll see over time you're making some really big inroads into your progress within your organizations <laughs> 